Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about how governments around the world can com be compared on the basis of participation. The key question we were looking at is, can the people participate? If the answer was yes, we saw people participating, we had democracies. If the answer was no, we had dictatorships. The specific look force that we were looking for to determine whether it was a dictatorship or a democracy, whether the people were participating, was we were looking to see, can the people vote? Were there elections that happening? Did those elections matter? We could also look to see if whether or not people could be free to run for office and to assume the powers of government and exercise those on the people of their country's behalf. Today we're going to add an extra layer of complexity when looking at that criterion participation. What we're going to do is ask, ask an additional question. The second question that we will ask ourselves is who can participate? Because depending on the answer to that question, we're going to have theocracies, plutocracies, or meritocracies. It's going to get a little complicated, possibly a little confusing, but I'm sure you can handle it. However, let's go over to the vis visualization board and let's make this stuff visual. So here's a government system that we diagrammed in the previous video. This particular government system we will only find in small communities. It's hard for a country on the large scale, macro scale, to actually implement this type of system. We look to see if the people are participating. We see, yes, they are. They're directly exercising the powers of government. And boom, you see the direct connection between the people and the powers of government, and you think direct democracy. Also, we can call pure or true democracy. And here's a diagram of another government system that we addressed in the previous video. Again, in this diagram here, I can see that the people are participating. In this case, it takes a little different form. I see that the people are involved in elections. They are voting. They're choosing who that representative is who will exercise the powers of government on their behalf. And I can see that the election matters because there's power down here with the people. If the people don't like this person, they can vote for someone else and switch that person up. You probably remember what type of democracy this is. France. No, France is a country, not a government system. This government system, we call a republic or a representational democracy. They mean the same thing, but that's what we are here in the United States, a republic. Now, let's move on to today's additional question. Who can participate? So I can limit who can participate in two places in this model. I can do it here and limit who's allowed to vote, or I can do it up here and limit who's allowed to serve. In both cases, if I do something like this, where I limit who can vote based on religion, I have what's called a theocracy. Only those people of a particular religion are allowed to cast ballots. Okay? That, now, have I moved a magnet? I haven't moved a single magnet, so it's still a republic, but it's also a theocracy. So what I do is I take the word theocracy, which is a noun, change it to an adjective. I now have what's called a theocratic republic. Iran is an example of a country that has whose government system is a theocratic republic. Now, religion is not the only way that I can limit participation. So I can also do the same thing right here. So again, right here, with people voting, if I say you're only allowed to vote if you've achieved a certain level of wealth, in that case, I have a plutocracy. We're more likely to see that limitation up here, up at the top. Like, who's allowed to serve? If you have to be of a certain class, or have to achieve achieved a certain level of wealth in order to serve in government, we would call it a plutocracy. Again, I haven't changed the magnet, so it's still a republic. And again, I take the word plutocracy, which is a noun, and turn it into an adjective, and this would be a plutocratic republic. Here's another fun one for you. So in this case, we're gonna limit who can participate based on merit, talent, skill, or education, that they have a certain amount of merit, they have a, a certain skill that they've achieved, 
they have a talent that the rest of the public doesn't necessarily have, or a certain level of education. If I do that, if I'm constraining the vote to the people that have achieved these qualities, whether it's one or more, I call it a meritocracy. Again, remember, I can limit it up here as well. I haven't changed the magnet, so it's still a republic. So in this case, I have a meritocratic republic. I've got one more model for you to kind of wrap up participation. So in this case, we're gonna limit who can serve in government. We're gonna require that they be members of a single political party. So in this country, if you wanna serve in government, you have to join this one political party. It's the only political party that is legally allowed to exist. Okay, so we would call this particular system single party rule or a single party system. You will note that it's still a republic. Okay, so it's still a democracy if there's power down here, if the people get to choose their leaders. However, from our perspective, when we look at the former Soviet Union, when we look at China, we often feel like there's not enough choice, there's not enough debate. If everybody has to adhere to that ideology, to those beliefs of that single political party, we think of it as a dictatorship. So this model, single party rule, single party dictatorship, from the perspective of the United States, we would say that this power is more up here. And in that case, does the vote really matter? Could they ever throw out this political party and put in a different political party? The answer is no. And in that case, participation really is limited and we would consider it a dictatorship. So single party rule, so, um, Single party system, dictatorship, just remember that. And that's it for participation. Two key questions, can the people participate? And uh, who can participate? All right, so let's see if you've been paying attention here. You know what model this is. It's a republic, it's a representational democracy. We haven't asked that second question yet, who can participate? However, if I do this, boom, and move this up here, you should know what system this is. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's right, it's an autocracy. We got one person who holds all of the powers of government and I do not, I cannot see the people participating. They're not voting, there's no elections. Now, I, if I add to this the question, who can participate? And if the answer, if this one leader, this dictator, this autocrat gets their position, because of religion, I might call this a theocratic autocracy. All right, but what if I do this? What if I uh, turn this autocracy into this? It's a small group of people that holds the powers of government. The people are not participating. There's no elections. It's an oligarchy. But what if I tell you that the people up here, the oligarchs, they are the wealthiest people in that country. That's how they got to their positions of power. Then I would have a plutocratic oligarchy. So yes, what I do is I mix and match, the, match these terms. I ask the first question, can the people participate? I identify it as a democracy or dictatorship, which type? And then I look a little deeper and I ask who can participate? And maybe it's a theocracy, maybe it's a theocratic republic, maybe it's a plutocratic oligarchy. All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for participating. We'll see you here for the next video as well.